Last time, Fanny and Faith went to rescue Fran. However, to the surprise of no one, it turned out to be a trap. Try as they might, though, the pack could not hold out against the combined forces of Red's goons and the YPD. And Fanny was arrested. It turns out that not only did Red want his money back, but he also wanted Fanny's bounty and the insurance money from the heist. I'd be impressed if I wasn't in jail. Meanwhile, Fran had managed to hide in all the confusion and overhear Red's schemes, which she promptly relayed to Fawn. So, our fiendish foe has friends on the force, huh? And he's fitting to finger the funds from the bounty and insurance? Girls, I got a plan. Red's going to get that money, and then we're going to get Red. But first, I need a nickel for the phones. I need a nickel, too. You need to make a call? No, I need to use the toilets! And so, while Fran finally got some relief, Fawn put out a call. A call to all her friends. For you see, Fawn fancied herself a spy and had her own little informal group who fed her information. No matter the question, Fawn could always get an answer. You should see me at quiz night. And an answer she got indeed. By the next morning, her desk was flooded with telegrams and messages from her spies. She knew everything there was about Red and his operations. Pretty soon, she had a detailed plan involving the entire pack with one simple goal. Destroy Red's empire and take the casino hall, the insurance money, and the bounty. That's two things. You know what's also two things? My fists. Meanwhile, at the Yellowton Jail. Here you go, Red. This check from the federal government is for the bounty. Make sure to get me my cut when you cash it. Oh, of course, Sheriff. Wouldn't want to endanger our friendship now, would we? <laughs> You know, I must thank you, Miss Fennick. You robbing me has been one of the most profitable ventures I've ever had. Gee, glad I could help. Let's do it again sometime. Suddenly, the deputy burst into the room. Sheriff, we got trouble. The casino, it's on fire. My casino! It's worse. There's a fire over at the Cuckoo Club, too. Wait, I own that as well. And there's one more, sir. Well, spit it out, son. Mamselle Pussycat's House of Felines is aflame! No! Let me guess. You own that, too. He does. And I was their best customer. All right, boys. Mount up and spread out. Seems we got a firebug about. And with that, Red, the Sheriff, and the entire YPD rushed off to assist with the blazes, leaving Fanny to her lonesome. Good. Maybe now I can focus on this crossword puzzle. What's a six-letter word for quiet? Fanny had little time to wonder about words, though, as with no one around, Fawn Fennec was able to walk right in. Ready to check out of this one-star hotel? Fawn! Those fires were your idea of a distraction, weren't they? Guilty as never charged. So, how you gonna bust me out? Tie a rope to the bars and pull them off of the car? Or maybe some dynamite in the wall? I have a slightly more subtle idea. That's it! What? S-U-B-T-L-E. Subtle. Let's just get you out of here. And with that, Fanny was a free Fennec. Elsewhere, Red Raccoon was crying over his lost empire. Or he was for about 16 hours. When late, the next day, his insurance adjuster came by to cut him a check. So, Mr. Raccoon, here is a check for the casino, and here is a check for the cuckoo club. Place was crazy, I tell ya. Gonna miss it. Ever go? Hmm, uh, no. Oh, and one more thing. Before I can give you this last check, I just need a little info. Yes? This Mamselle Pussycat's House of Felines, 
what type of establishment was it exactly? Why, it was a toilet factory. A toilet factory? Yeah. All day long, the girls there worked on nothing but Johns. <laughs> and with that, Red had in his safe not only the money from the casino, but the bounty. And not one, but four checks from the insurance company, all which would fatten his balance sheet. Now that's what I call checks and balances. But outside, a shadowy figure stalked about. I resent that. Oh, sorry, Ferris. I thought you were fun. Eh, fair enough. That was the insurance man, which means your tip was right, and he's paid off red. Yes, which means tomorrow we can put into play part two of my plan. What could part two be? Join us in part five for triple indemnity. Or don't write checks or fanny cat cash. <laughs>